Hi everybody. Today I want to talk about quantum metrology. Metrology is one of the most undervalued areas of science. And no, I'm not just mispronouncing meteorology. I actually mean metrology. Think meter, not meteor. Metrology is the science of measurement. Meteorology is about clouds and things like that. And the study of meteors, in case you wonder, is called meteoritics. Metrology matters because you can't do science without measuring things. In metrology, scientists deal with problems how to define conventions for units, how to do this most accurately, how to most reliably reproduce measurements, and so on. Metrology sounds boring, but it is super important to move from basic research to commercial application. Just consider you are trying to build a house. If you cannot measure distances and angles, it does not matter how good your mathematics is, that house is not going to come out right. And the smaller the object that you want to build, the more precisely you must be able to measure. It's as simple as that. You can't reliably produce something if you don't know what you are doing. But if you start dealing with very small things, then quantum mechanics will become important. Yes, quantum mechanics is in principle a theory that applies to objects of all sizes, but in practice its effects are negligibly tiny for large things. However, from the size of molecules downwards, quantum effects are essential to understand what is going on. So what then is quantum metrology? Quantum metrology uses quantum effects to make more precise measurements. It may sound somewhat weird that quantum mechanics can help you to measure things more precisely, because we all know that quantum mechanics is uncertain, right? So how do these two things fit together, quantum uncertainty and more precise measurements? Well, quantum uncertainty is not something that applies to any measurement. It only sets a limit to the entirety of information you can obtain about a system. For example, there is nothing in quantum mechanics that prevents you from measuring the momentum of an electron precisely. But if you do that, you cannot also measure its position precisely. That's what the uncertainty principle tells you. So you have to decide what you want to measure. But the uncertainty principle is not an obstacle to measuring precisely per se. Now, the magic that allows you to measure things more precisely with quantum effects is the same that gives quantum computers an edge over ordinary computers. It's that quantum particles can be correlated in ways that non-quantum particles can't. This quantum typical type of correlation is called entanglement. There are many different ways to entangle particles, so entanglement lets you encode a lot of information with few particles. In a quantum computer, you want to use this to perform a lot of operations quickly. For quantum metrology, more information in a small space means a higher sensitivity of your measurement. Quantum computers exist already, but the ones which exist are far from being useful. That's because you need a large number of entangled particles, as much as a million, to not only make calculations, but to make calculations that are actually faster than you could do with a conventional computer. I explained the issue with quantum computers in an earlier video. But in contrast to quantum computers, quantum metrology does not require large numbers of entangled particles. A simple example for how quantum behavior can aid measurement comes from medicine. Positron emission tomography, or PET for short, is an imaging method that relies on, yes, entangled particles. For PET, one uses a short-lived radioactive substance called a tracer that is injected into whatever body part you want to investigate. A typical substance that's being used for this is carbon-11, which has a half-life of about 20 minutes. The radioactive substance makes a better decay and emits a positron. The positron annihilates with one of the electrons in the neighborhood of the decay site, which creates, here it comes, an entangled pair of photons. They fly off not in one particular direction, but in two opposite directions. So if you measure two photons that fit together, you can calculate where they were emitted. And from this, you can reconstruct the distribution of the radioactive substance, which traces the tissue of interest. 
Positron emission tomography has been used since the 1950s, and it's a simple example for how quantum effects can aid measurements. But the general theoretical basis of quantum metrology was only late in the 1980s. And then, for a long time, not much happened, because it's really hard to control quantum effects without getting screwed up by noise. In that, quantum metrology faced the same problem as quantum computing. But in the past two decades, physicists have made rapid progress in designing and controlling quantum states, and with that, quantum metrology has become one of the most promising avenues to new technology. In 2009, for example, entangled photons were used to improve the resolution of an imaging method called optical coherence tomography. The way this works is that you create a pair of entangled photons and let them travel in two different directions. One of the photons enters a sample that you want to study, the other does not. Then you recombine the photons, which tells you where the one photon scattered in the sample, which you can then use to reconstruct how the sample is made up. You can do that with normal light, but the quantum correlations let you measure more precisely. And it's not only about the precision. These quantum measurements require only tiny numbers of particles, so they are minimally disruptive and therefore particularly well suited to the study of biological systems, for example the eye, for which you don't exactly want to use a laser beam. Another example for quantum metrology is the precise measurement of magnetic fields. You can measure a magnetic field by taking a cloud of atoms, splitting it in two, letting one part go through the magnetic field and then recombining the atoms. The magnetic field will shift the phases of the atoms that pass through it, because particles are also waves, and you can measure how much the phases were shifted, which tells you what the magnetic field was, and if you entangle those atoms, you can improve the sensitivity to the magnetic field. This is called quantum enhanced magnetometry. Quantum metrology has also been used to improve the sensitivity of the LIGO gravitational wave interferometer. LIGO uses laser beams to measure periodic distortions of space and time. Laser light itself is already remarkable, but one can improve on it by bringing the laser light into a particular quantum state, called a squeezed state, that is less sensitive to noise and therefore allows more precise measurements. Now, clearly, these are not technologies you will have a switch for on your phone anytime soon. But they are technologies with practical uses, and they are technologies that we already know do really work. I don't usually give investment advice, but if I was rich, I would put my money into quantum metrology, not into quantum computing. Thanks for watching. See you next week.